I'm a sick person. <laughs>this is John Vanderslice and you are in the the lower south east corner of the mission in San Francisco the a room which we're gonna see uh, after we see the B room we started that 20 years ago and uh, it's just a miracle that we that we're still here so let's go inside I'll show you the B room first then we'll see the a room very very similar uh, it's old school triangle based on a console um, a Studer tape deck and and our Spitz re rebuilt ATR 102 uh, we're unusual in that we enforce tape recording um, if you're on a computer here you're doing like a commercial or like a voiceover or the engineer has totally given up on you <laughs> and that's really <laughs> that that's the bad <laughs> news that you need to know The reason why we do that, one, I think that Pro Tools doesn't sound very good, and two, I don't like the, the working method. I don't like the, the nervousness that it imparts on bands. I mean, you can have the most bold, fuck you punk band turn into the most paranoid weirdos when they're looking at their performances um, in as a visual kind of like, you know, a, a represented waveform on a screen, people get very timid very quickly. And so I, I just don't, I'm just not into it. Also, I don't like the deferred decision making that Pro Tools encourages. Um, I just think that there needs, you need to encourage kind of boldness and, uh, and a certain kind of violence in recording. And I don't think computers really help that. I love computers, nothing against computers. Like, if we had like, advanced AI robots walking around in driverless cars. I'm all for it. You know what I mean? I'm like, a, you know, I, I, we're, we're in the middle of like tech heaven here or tech hell. But I just don't think it's very good for music right now. So that's the end of my spiel. You, you can keep it or leave it. Um, but everything's, you know, old school. Uh, it's in here, it's tiny telephone patch bay. In the A room, it's a, it's a long frame patch bay. Um, we have a lot of the same outboard gear. I love Ampex 351s and tube mic pre's in general like Bogan, Stromberg, Carlson. We have everything rebuilt by um, a series of techs. In general we have about seven techs who work with us. Um, I love early lexicon effects and I love um, early eventide effects. And other than that we kind of stick to original issue Yuri stuff and, um, and Neve. So Neve 31102 modules are huge here. The console in Oakland is double 8068, so we have 64 modules of 31102. Really the last, you know, really the last stop in, um, in Neve Class A technology. And so we kind of uh, threw some of those modules around all of the rooms. And we have four in here. Shit, I wish we had 20. We provide free tape to bands. Uh, that way I can be annoying and they, it's not as obnoxious. Do you know what I mean? At least I'm meeting bands like more than halfway. Um, and we do uh, strongly encourage bands to mix to half inch tape. It's incredibly rare that bands don't record on two inch tape and then mix to half inch tape with no introduction of a computer. Um, the other reason why we do that is that Probably within a 10 block radius, there are 50 Pro Tools HD rigs. So it's not really that interesting to have, you know what I mean? And these are, these are interesting to me. Let's go see the, uh, let's go see the live room. Salome, come on, watch it.
No, it's all good. She's, she's in the way. I really love keyboards. I think keyboards are kind of the most uh, important. In some ways, they're the most powerful thing a studio can, can provide because um, bands don't usually have very good keyboards. And so I think when you get to overdubs on a record, the thing that can make a, 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 an album radically different is the use of keyboards, whether it's combo organs like like an RMI or a Farfisa or um, poly stuff, like a Prophet 5 or mono, mono Poly or a Monopoly as they called it, or pianos and organs and Wurlitzers and Rhodes. It's just, it's the most useful, powerful thing ever. I mean, I love guitars, you know, I grew up with guitars, but Guitars are very um, greedy in like what they demand from the dynamic space of a record. They steal all the middle range information and keyboards are so much more focused in where they can be placed and you can dial them up so quick that, I don't know, I love keyboards. <laughs> um, we have a lot of mics here, 67 C12A, a lot of Josephson stuff. I think we have 13 Josephson mics. This is a C716. Um, and yeah, this room's very, very simple. Small, diffuse uh, room with two ISOs and an echo chamber. I'll show you the echo chamber. There's a coals in here. We, I think we have eight, eight coals now. I mean, those are endlessly useful. Two, six, 35 omnis. And this room, the reverb tail is, you know, probably over, well over two seconds. Oh! And we do percussion here. We mostly do live performance as opposed to reamping. We certainly do a lot of reamping, but I think that I prefer to do live performance in here. Whether it's doubling, we had a clarinet player in here, Ben Goldberg, and we would, you know, do a very close cardioid miking of his clarinet, his contra alto clarinet, and then we would double it in here and just pan it hard left, hard right. Pretty incredible. Uh, let's show you the. Uh, oh, I'll show you the kitchen on the way to the A room. So we have uh, like really good coffee here. We have Ritual Roasters. Um, and then we also have Five Mountains Tea, which is a fantastic like local tea company, organic. And then we also have Tiny Telephone Organics Outdoor Sour Diesel Marijuana for free. So we provide free good coffee, free good tea, and free good marijuana. That makes me like, first off, it's super California. It makes me really proud. You can come here without, you know, you're a band from out of town. And everyone asks for weed, and I'm like, well, go to the kitchen. There's like a jar of free marijuana. Tiny Telephone Organics. If I can get like a million bucks, I'm going to start a recreational dispensary. This is Bo Sorensen. He's a very important person. Very significant. No, he's very important. I'm trying to get him to smoke mar more marijuana. But... I know. He is. No, you're good. That smells very good. Um... Let me make sure this is all working. This is the A room. The A room is centered around a discrete Neve 5316, a 34 channel broadcast console that's been heavily modified and tweaked and improved. We have a lot of AMS stuff as well. Um, and then this has an old uh, military patch bay, a cool Bryce compressor, another Bogan, and then, you know, a lot of. Uh, early issue uh, Yuri stuff to uh, discrete uh, 1176s, 1178, all that stuff's been rebuilt by Kolka at Studio Electronics. I mean, we're pretty, we have a system in, in place where we, you know, there's just certain things that we need in every room, like an ELOP or two 351s or 1176s. Um, and, uh, 
and very, uh, you know, a smart compressor. So that every room has like the ability where engineers can go back and forth and not really um, miss a beat. They are very knee deep in overdubs in this room. Um, Jacob Winnick is the engineer in here. And let's see what we got. Yeah, we got a cert. These are very useful. These aluminum certos are great. Uh, a bunch of coals and some Josephson stuff up. D12. Some strings. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but they're, they're doing some cool shit. Some DPAs on the piano. And now we're in the lounge of A. And um, this is where we keep some of our orchestral percussion stuff. We just got this concert uh, drum. Very, very useful, actually. Uh, and we just got this copper timpani. We had the um, SF Symphony a tech in here to fix it, and they taught me a lot about timpani drums. The things that, I mean, these things, they're complicated. It's a harpsichord, which we record quite a bit, actually. Any band from LA wants to put harpsichord on, <laughs> on their songs. So, it's super useful to, ha to have a harpsichord and... I mean, in general, we try to have instruments that are very extreme uh, in... Like, their dynamic range is very extreme. Like, we have um, Nashville Strung Acoustics in both studios. You know, the top six strings of an acoustic guitar. We have... Um, very, very good um, monophonic bass synths, you know, like a Moog source or a mini Moog um, for bass. For some reason, we have two prodigies in here now and two sources. <laughs> I don't know why. And then here we have a phenomenal collection of pedals, of which there are dozens and dozens and dozens of Earthquaker pedals. And Oakland has even more Earthquaker pedals. But it's just a fucking pleasure to come in here. We have really interesting early Ibanez phasers and some classic shit. Um, a lot of Pigtronic stuff here. Let me close this. But we lean on Earthquake. We might. Oh, I love this phase tone. That thing is fucking baller. I love this pedal. I use this at least once a record, if not more. Um, Here's a, the, a very early Klon, an early uh, Centaur. I mean, uh, like actual Centaur guy. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff made for us. Oh, I love this Hoof Reaper. The Bit Commander, use that fucking all the time. Oh yeah, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> Hello? Is, any, is anyone there? Oh, it's a debt collector. No problem. Here, I'll just hang up on him. <laughs> Done.